Mm. <laughs> Melt in your mouth. Definitely really good. Hey everyone, I'm Dave, and today we're gonna turn this into the world's best roasted mashed potatoes. Well, at least we hope that's the case, and I think that's the case. Because as always on this channel, we look up the world's best recipes on Google, we test them out, and we see if they really are as amazing as Google claims they are. So we're gonna start off today by looking up world's best roasted potatoes. And I already pre-looked this up, world's best roasted potatoes. And I was pretty surprised by the recipe that came up. The recipe came from Serious Eats by someone named Kenji Lopez, who I think I've heard of. I think a lot of people have heard of him. He's supposedly a very good cook. <laughs> I've never had his food directly, but he seems like a very good cook. And this article is full of like all the science of how to make these world's best crispy roasted potatoes. And the picture looks amazing. And it's quite a process, more than I've ever done before for a roasted potato. So I'm hoping the work pays off because it is more work. I'm gonna do it here. I'm gonna show you how I do it. And then you can try it at home if you like it. Let's get started. Now, first thing we gotta do is some prep work. The prep work is pretty simple. We've got to cut and peel the potatoes which is easy enough. This is a potato peeler if you don't have one or haven't seen one. I, you know, I never know who's watching. It's definitely possible. I've had people write me and say they watch this and don't ever cook or hardly ever cook. So potato peeler, you know, maybe they don't know what that is. But anyways, you peel the potatoes first and I've got to do this five times. So I'm not going to make you watch. What I'll do is I'll uh, prep this first one, show you how I do it. And then, you know, rinse and repeat as it were. I do love me some roasted potatoes. I feel like it's an anytime food. <laughs> It's an anytime snack. You can have it for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Doesn't matter to me. I'll eat potatoes. Think about it. You got hash browns in the morning. You got, well, I got the hash brown casserole too at like uh, Waffle House. That stuff's pretty good. I don't have a fancy palate. I'll eat some Waffle House. Waffle House is delicious. Peel it like that. Oof. And then cut it into cubes. This knife is not very sharp. I should probably upgrade my knife. So when I hear cubes, I'm thinking like that basically, right? That's kind of what I'm wanting. So I'm going to basically cut this into cubes like so. And actually, let's get this started too, so that it's ready by the time I'm done. I'm gonna take a pot and fill it with two quarts of water, it says. Two quarts or, yeah, two quarts. It says two quarts slash two liters, which are technically different measurements, aren't they? My pan is actually pretty cool. A pot is pretty cool. It's got measurements in there. I don't, I don't know if I can make them show up on the camera, but basically measurements up the side so I can just fill it up to two quarts with water. All right, so as I said, this has two quarts of water in it. Now I'm gonna put it on the oven. And just to be thorough, let me read this whole thing. Heat two quarts of water in a large pot over high heat until boiling. Add two tablespoons of kosher salt, which I do need to grab that actually. So it tells us to heat it to boiling first. Then we're gonna add two teaspoons of salt, two tablespoons spoons of salt, some baking soda, which is unique to the potato and the potatoes and stir. So I'm gonna get that boiling. It also says we can go ahead and preheat our oven to 450 because these are gonna be boiled then baked, which actually makes me think that I've kind of done this by accident a few times in the past. <laughs> what I've done before is we'll have potatoes, like boiled potatoes at dinner or something. And then the next day we'll take the leftovers in the morning and we'll throw them on like a griddle top. And we will then griddle them after having already boiled them the night before. And those usually end up being like the best breakfast potatoes. So it seems like we might have accidentally stumbled into what this recipe is kind of teaching in a sense by accident, which is pretty cool. Especially when we go camping, like we've gone camping a few times and had boiled potatoes with dinner and then the next morning the leftovers would become part of breakfast where we would have bacon and all this other good stuff on the on the Blackstone griddle. You know, not sponsored, but Blackstone wants to send me their top of the line griddle, I'll accept it. <laughs> So, I mean, as you can see, this is just simple chopping of a potato. Potato chop central right here. I'm kind of making a mess with it. Now I'm concerned that the potatoes will brown if I'm not fast enough. And since I'm like recording this, there's like little things I have to do, like move cameras around and stuff. So I'm a little worried that my, my potatoes might go brown on me. Let me get my cutting board is all occupied. So I'm just gonna take this stuff and move it out of the way. So you can see it's coming together. Just a bunch of, these are gonna be the potatoes we eat now. The recipe called for, I believe two pounds of potatoes, but obviously you could make more if you wanted to. I actually had one more potato, but my kids stole it. <laughs> they were, they drew a face on it and it was their friend. It was their potato buddy. So you gotta love the imagination of kids, right? They have their potato buddy. So let me get these peeled and chopped and we'll be back in just a second.
What does this mean? Look at this. It's a green potato. Well, it's just got a hint of green. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Does that mean, it reminds me of Minecraft though, which is a video game. Uh, and if you eat a rotten potato, you get sick. Maybe I should look it up, see if green potatoes are bad for you. Or I could ask my Amazon enabled device. Let's ask it. Computer, what does it mean if my potato is green? Okay, so I don't know if you heard that. I'll cut it out if you didn't, but basically it said you shouldn't really eat the green part. Uh, it's safe to eat just not minus the green areas. So I'm just gonna make sure I peel off the green areas. It's chlorophyll, more like borophyll. <laughs> That's from a movie. If you can name that movie down below, I'll be impressed. Chlorophyll, more like borophyll. Borophyll, more like borophyll. Okay, I think I got most of the green off. All right, so we're chopping up our last potato at this point. This knife has not gotten sharper via any sort of magic powers. So that stinks, but it's all right. We've made it happen. The water is almost boiling. I can actually hear it behind me. And so our next step is gonna be take all these cut up potatoes we've got here, and we're gonna add salt and baking powder. Wait, I gotta make sure I get that right. Is it baking powder or baking soda? Baking soda, which is what I have pulled out anyways. So that's a good thing. And we're gonna add them to the pot and boil the potatoes, I think for about 10 minutes. So let me just put these in this bowl. All right, so here we go. All these potatoes are cut up all nicely. And like I said, they're gonna go over to the stove with me and I'm gonna bring the baking soda and the salt. All right, so simple enough, we've got our boiling water over there. I brought my potatoes. I'm gonna get my baking soda and my salt. Now, with the baking soda, you just need a half teaspoon, which is what this is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and measure that out. Half a teaspoon of baking soda, like that. And then we'll need two teaspoons of salt, which I'll measure when I get over there. It technically says kosher salt, but I didn't remember to buy any. I've got sea salt, so we're gonna use that. Two teaspoons of that. So first, let's come over here. And as you can see, water is boiling. Let's add the baking soda. Then we'll add the salt. One teaspoon, two teaspoons. And then we add our potatoes. Ah, splashing everywhere. That was not the best move, but it's all right. All right, so now our potatoes are in there in the boiling water. It did stop the boil because the potatoes were kind of cold. 10 minutes in there is what we want. Now it does say to stir this once you add all the ingredients. So let's stir it up really quick. And then we return it to the boil, which is back on the high heat. We never took it off. So I guess we could have taken it off, added it, and then put it back on. That might even be a little safer. Maybe do it that way. And I also want to say it says, cook it for 10 minutes after returning to boil. To me, that means once it starts boiling again, I'm gonna set the timer to 10 minutes. I don't think it really matters. Basically, you want it to be at a point where if you stick a fork in the potato, there's little to no resistance. So it's nice and soft. All right, so the next thing we need to do is get a small saucepan, saucepan, which I would call this a small saucepan. We're gonna use that to heat up the aromatics, I guess you'd call them. Let me get another clean cutting board. And remember, I still have the potatoes boiling back there, but our next step is to take our rosemary. And we don't need a lot of rosemary, just a little bit of rosemary. Wash it if you haven't washed it already. And it just calls for a small handful. I mean, what do you call a small handful? Like that? I don't know. I always find that to be a little vague. I'd say this is like a small handful. This is a big, this would be a big handful, right? So a small handful, I'm gonna do a little less like that, maybe. And we're just gonna chop that up. And that's actually gonna be part of the spice on the potato uh, once it's all done cooking. It's really an interesting thing because normally, ow, I just cut my fingernail. <laughs> Thank goodness for nails. They're protectors of fingers. Normally I would put all the spices on before it cooks, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Here. All right, so I just realized now, this is a part of the video where I tell you guys I'm not a professional cook. And I'm not, I'm just someone who likes to Google recipes and try cooking them. I'm decent at cooking, uh, at least according to you guys, but I'm not amazing at it. And what I've just realized is that I just cut up parsley, not rosemary. That is not rosemary. So let's try it again with the actual rosemary this time. <laughs> that I will, you know, I will try again. So here is a rosemary. So I'll just do a couple of these. Maybe I'll do three twigs worth and wash it really quick. All right, so the potatoes have returned to a boil. I'm gonna set the timer for like nine minutes because they probably started a little while ago and then I'll come check them. All right, so here's the rosemary and basically you don't use the stick, just pull it off like so. Actually, that right there could be a, considered a small handful. Let's just do a little more and we'll do this whole twig worth. So two twigs worth. Well, I mean, we've got our, we're gonna need the parsley later. So it's fine that we've pre-cut it. And uh, you know, if you want to, you can pre-cut the parsley now. Wow, this is very, very, very smelly. Whew. 
Goodness gracious, it hit me hard this morning. I don't know if this is like extra smelly rosemary or what, but I am cooking this bright and early. So maybe it's just that like my senses weren't ready for this intense aroma of rosemary. So anyways, chop that up. This is gonna be eaten. So, you know, how big of a leaf do you wanna eat on your potatoes is how much you should chop it. If you don't mind a bigger leaf, I guess you could chop it a little less, but I want it to be pretty small. That looks pretty good to me. All right, so rosemary is chopped up. And then we need some garlic. How much garlic do we need? Three medium cloves. So I've got my garlic here. One, two, three. Three cloves of garlic that we're just gonna peel and get chopped up. Again, I like to push them down with the flat of the knife just because it makes it easier to get it peeled. No one really likes peeling garlic the hard way. See how easy that was? All right, they're all peeled. See, I even like cut it away a little bit so you didn't have to watch that. It actually didn't take that long. It took like 30 seconds. Now we're chopping the garlic. Because I'm a ninja, I'm chopping all three cloves at once. <laughs> This is how you hurt yourself. Chop it up, chop it. I realize I'm blocking the camera's view with my big hand. Actually, my hand's not that big. It's just like, you know, like just little stubby sausages. <laughs> I'm not gonna be a hand model like George Costanza, let's say that. So these are gonna be our kind of aromatic spices for the potatoes. Well, I don't know, would you call it? It's an herb. Herbs is the right word, not spices. Although I feel like they sell rosemary in the spice aisle. They sell garlic in the spice aisle, so I'm not sure. Is an herb a spice? Let me know in the comments down below. There we go. There's our garlic, which honestly, if I was making this myself, I'd probably use more garlic. Like if I wasn't following a recipe, because I love me some garlicky potatoes, but we're gonna follow the recipe exactly. Well, other than the kosher salt, because I didn't have any. All right, so the potatoes are still boiling away. Our next step is gonna be to put all this in a saucepan. A saucepan, not the parsley guys, not the parsley. Slow down, Dave. Let's reread the instructions. All right, what we actually need to do is take this pot and put five tablespoons of olive oil in it, which is not hard. I will tell you a lot of times, if it's that many tablespoons of something, I'll like try to convert it to cups, right? Because a cup has 16 tablespoons, so it's like a little more than a quarter cup, but I'm not even gonna do it that way. We'll do it this way. We need five tablespoons. One, two, three, four, and this oil is gonna become what goes on the potatoes after we do this, but it's gonna have like this aromatic quality because we're gonna cook this garlic and rosemary in it. So we're gonna put the garlic in there. We're gonna put the rosemary in there. So when it comes time to get rid of the oil, you don't wanna throw the oil out. The oil is gonna be a crucial ingredient. What it calls for is a very a fine strainer. And then you put the strainer over a bowl so you can capture all that oil when you're done here. So. This is what's going to go on the oven next. And we're gonna heat this up and it looks amazing. I wanna dip my bread in that, I'll be honest. Looks delicious. Now, before we get started, this is a fast process. You've gotta shake it constantly. It's three minutes and then you gotta get it off and immediately strain it. So I'm gonna get my strainer ready ahead of time so that I'm not stressed out when it comes time. You know, sometimes you gotta work with what you got and I'm not super fancy. I have this thing, which I'm gonna call it a fine strainer because it's all I can find. Let me see, I have one more thing I might have that could work. Let me see if I can find it. Oh yeah, this is gonna be better because the holes are even smaller. Okay, so we'll use this. And this is my bowl I can find. I'm gonna put that like that so once the oil's done, we'll just pour it in here. I think it'll be okay with the hot oil, right? Yeah, it'll be fine. So that's what's gonna happen in a couple minutes. Let's bring this over to the stove, medium heat. All right, I wanna say another place I screwed up and maybe I can add a note in text when I edit. Technically, once the uh, potatoes started to boil, I was supposed to reduce to a simmer, like reduce the heat, and I didn't. I've left it on high for basically 10 minutes. Um, they're probably done, but I would definitely recommend reducing to a simmer. Hopefully that doesn't affect it too much, we'll see. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna just feel the potatoes to see if they're offering any resistance, and they're not. They're very soft at this point. Then fork's going right through them. So I'm gonna pull these off the heat. Now our timing's a little off here. So I'm gonna pull the potatoes off and you know, we need to strain them and all that stuff, but we gotta do this oil thing. I'm running behind basically is what I'm saying. So it'll have to do. All right, so we've got our oil on here and it's sizzling a little bit. And we're just gonna move around the oil, heat it up best we can. Three minutes, you want the garlic to basically start turning golden. And you could probably use a bigger pan for this. It might even be better to use a bigger pan. It said to use a small pan. But now that I'm thinking about it, the garlic might have some trouble cooking in here. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see, it might be fine. We're gonna cook it for three minutes and consistently move it. Now we are gonna strain the potatoes too. So I'm just gonna use this bigger one to strain the potatoes. I'll pour them in. What does it say? It says, when potatoes are done, drain them carefully, let them rest in the pot for 30 seconds to allow excess moisture to evaporate. So we'll strain them, put them back in the pot for 30 seconds to let that water evaporate. Okay, so this is sizzling. We just wanna move this around. Like I said, about three minutes for this delicious spice mix herb blend to cook up. Constant movement, it says.
And honestly, I think the movement would matter more, if I'm serious here, if it was a bigger pan and the garlic was like touching with no oil. Since it's all like basically being deep fried because I have such a shallow pan, I don't know. It might be, it might be fine to not move it as much, but I'm not gonna play games. I'm gonna keep spinning it. Basically I want the garlic to start to turn golden, which it should do. And all the rosemary and garlic are kind of like being absorbed into the oil right now, making it a very fragrant and delicious smelling oil. Tasting oil, even. Forget smelling, it's gonna taste amazing. Look how good that looks. Hmm, I wish you could smell this. It smells incredible. You see how the garlic's now like turning a little off-white, like a little yellow, a little golden? That's what you want. It's like a golden garlic. And I'm gonna pull it off really soon, probably 20 seconds, and we're gonna call it done. All right, I'm calling that golden. We're gonna turn off the heat and pull this off. It looks amazing, absolutely amazing. Now, like I said, we've got this set up. We're going to drain it in. I don't know if you can see that properly, but basically I dumped it all in there. All right, we drained it in there. We've got this set aside and we've got our delicious looking oil in there. Now we're gonna go drain the potatoes really quick and bring them over here. All right, so basically we've got the strained potato. We've let sit for 30 seconds. The rosemary, the garlic, that's gonna be set aside. We're gonna use that when we actually cook the potatoes. Well, I'm not sure when we're gonna use it. Hold on, I'll let you know. For now, we're just gonna set it in a little bowl like this. All right, so we've got our potatoes here. We've got our oil. We're gonna dump the potatoes into this infused oil, like so. Oops, <laughs> we got an edge potato. Now it says to add a little more salt and pepper at this point, so I'm just gonna do exactly that. Oops, see this is why you do pepper to hand and salt to hand and not straight to the bowl because I went way too heavy on the pour and I definitely don't want that much pepper on my potatoes. Now it says to shake this up so the oil gets all around there. I don't know, like this I guess? Maybe I'll use a fork first or a spatula just to at least get the oil permeated around a little bit. I, mean, I don't know, I want to make sure it gets everywhere. Now it says you want to have like a, a bit of a paste on the potatoes, which we definitely have. It almost looks like some mashed potatoes on the potatoes themselves. <laughs> That's part of it. It says season to taste with a little more salt and pepper, toss to coat. So that's what we're doing now. We're tossing it with this thing. And man, it's like, again, I think I might've cooked my potatoes a tiny bit too long, but not like way too long because they're on the edge of becoming mashed potatoes. So they're definitely a little overdone, but I think it'll be okay. Let's add a little more salt and pepper to this side. Salt, you can always add salt and pepper after anyways. All right, so now it says to add them to a large room baking sheet, which I've gotten one of those out. Yeah, I definitely, <laughs> definitely went a little far on the boil, but that's okay. It almost looks like mashed. Ugh. So again, to remind you what went wrong, I left it on high heat for the 10 minutes that I boiled these potatoes, and you're supposed to reduce the heat to a simmer. And you actually are supposed to get some of this like mashed potato-y substance on the potatoes, but I think I've got too much on there where I'm like at the edge of mashed potatoes. You know what, it still might come out really good so let's do it anyways and see how it comes out so at this point I put foil on there just so it's easier to clean up I'm gonna put this in the oven on 450 and it's gonna be 450 degrees for 20 minutes so let's set our timer for 20 minutes all right guys so it's been 20 minutes the potatoes are not done but this is a step you have to do you have to open up the oven get all the stuffed potatoes unstuck Otherwise they could burn to the bottom and kind of move them around a little bit with a spatula. And then we're gonna shut it again for another 30 minutes. So let's go over there, take a look at them. Hopefully they're looking good. All right, so they're looking like potatoes. I mean, they definitely have quite a ways to go on the cooking front, but let's just see if there's any that are stuck. You know, this actually might mean this might be where I discover that using the tin foil was a bad idea, or the aluminum foil, because it looks like it's like just peeling off onto the tin foil. This is typical Dave screwing up a dish by not wanting to clean. Oh well, <laughs> this is not good. I don't think this is what's supposed to happen. So again, I might add a note to this recipe saying don't use the tin foil, because look, that's all the good stuff and it's getting stuck to the tin foil. Dang it. <sighs> well, whatever. <laughs> Sorry guys, I try. <sighs> I'm frustrated by that. Hopefully it turns out okay. Well, you guys, it's gonna be like snap a finger and we'll be back and we'll see. For me, I gotta wait 30 to 40 minutes and see what happens, but I'm a little concerned that it's all gonna get stuck to the tray. Eh, whatever. Okay, well, let's set the timer for 35 minutes-ish and we'll come back and hopefully we have the world's best roasted potato. And if we don't, you can always laugh at me. It's a win-win. Okay, so I'm back. It has been just about 40 minutes. I've left the potatoes on. I think they're about done. So we're gonna pull them out of the oven. We're gonna take a look at them, pull them out, and then we'll finish this up and we're gonna try and see if these really are the world's best roasted potatoes. We're just gonna use my cell phone camera to look at them in the oven so I don't have to move a bunch of stuff around. 
Now, definitely got a lot of toasty stuff on the bottom of the tray. And they look decent. Let's take them over here. I feel like this is a kind of scenario where I burn my hand. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna use the spatula and I'm gonna kind of just scrape them off into, uh, see, that's the problem though. I don't wanna get foil in my food. Oh man, hold on. This might be a, a bit of an operation. Don't use the tin foil. This is my biggest recommendation from this recipe. Learn with me. <laughs> Otherwise you're gonna have to peel it off. Although that looks pretty crispy and good, so. It's interesting. Just don't use the foil. And also make sure when you foil your potatoes, you put it back down to a simmer after you add the taters, after they come back up to a boil. I feel like the biggest reason not to use the foil is this uh, crunchy stuff on the, on the foil is probably delicious. And if it was just on the actual tray itself, I'd be able to scrape it off. But you know what? What we've got doesn't look bad either. All right, you guys remember this? This is our Rosemary, thyme, thyme. <laughs> rosemary, garlic, and parsley. That's the parsley I chopped up earlier. We're gonna add that to the potatoes now, and we're just gonna toss to mix it. And again, I could use a spoon or something. Just kinda get it all mixed up in there. I want all that flavor to be coated throughout. I think the only difference would be if I had um, actually turned the heat down, it wouldn't be so soft, but honestly, they, they kinda hardened up a little bit anyways. So I think it's okay. All right, so there we go. World's best roasted potatoes, guys. How do they look? Now let's try them out. I'm just gonna take a fork, grab a little bite full, like so. There we go. We're gonna try these. Oh, let me get it in the camera. There you go. Let's try them. This is probably gonna be hot. I'm probably gonna burn my mouth. Look at that. They're very nice and crispy on the outside, but soft on the inside. Oh man. Wow. Hold on, get some of that garlic on there. Okay, I should stop eating with my hands. These are delicious. These are the best roasted potatoes I've ever made, without a doubt, and I screwed them up. So that just tells you that even with screwing them up, they're still delicious. These little chunks of like, remember we boiled or cooked that garlic in the oil? It made them, the garlic chunks, like those little crispy nuggets of goodness that are like, mm, <laughs> melt in your mouth. Definitely really good. So what I would say is you definitely need to try these. These are amazing. I would give these, I would give these a world's best without a doubt. I used russet potatoes. That's important. The big thing I would change is, like I said, once the water comes to a boil with the potatoes in it, turn that heat down so they don't get quite as far along as mine got. Mine got a little overcooked there. And then when it comes to actually baking them, do not put aluminum foil on there, tin foil, whatever you call it. It didn't ruin it. It just made it a pain to get it all out of there. And I crushed some more potatoes up and turned them into like mashed bits, but the flavor is delicious. The, the potato itself has that oil like infused into it, which had that garlic and rosemary. So each bite, even if it doesn't have like garlic and rosemary physically on it, still has an intense garlic and rosemary flavor. So try it guys, make sure you subscribe. Check out my other videos where I try all the world's best recipes and let me know down below what I should try next.